Hello, uh, my name is Karel Šimon. I am a software engineer in Red Hat, uh, working on a project called OpenShift Virtualization. And I would like to present here a cool feature called Qvert Tecton Task. And uh, long story short, with this project, you can automate the VM workloads. So you can EG start them, run some scripts inside the VM, then turn them down, or much more. I will show you some examples, uh, what you can do. It's, it's pretty cool, you will see by yourself. So, uh, so at first, we will talk a few sentences about OpenShift virtualization, what is it, or what's, what's it used. Then, a few sentences about OpenShift pipelines, then the project, Qvert Tecton task, then Qvert Tecton task operator, and then some example pipelines, what you can do with our project. So, what is OpenShift virtualization? Uh, it's uh, in case you have uh, workloads in virtual machines and you run it all the way, it might be hard to bring it to a new uh, systems like Kubernetes or OpenShift. So, but uh, with OpenShift virtualization, you can bring your old workloads uh, to Kubernetes or OpenShift and you can run it next to the containers. Uh, OpenShift virtualization supports Linux and Windows. Uh, we have multiple features there, e.g. Just, just a snapshot, it's, it's a subset. Uh, importing, live migration, snapshotting, monitoring, and many other features. Of course, uh, we have a templates. It's called, the project is called Common Template. And it's a set of template for uh, most of the modern operating systems. So for example, you don't have to find on the internet how many CPU cores or how many memory each operating system needs, but you just uh, look inside the UI of OpenShift and there you will see, for example, templates for Ubuntu, for Fedora, for Windows, and with just a few clicks, you can have a fully working virtual machine. And of course, you have to provide a cloud image for it. But for that, we have another feature called Golden Images, and for example, for Ubuntu, for RHEL, for Fedora, we are distributing these images inside the, uh, cl in, inside the cluster, so you don't have to care about anything. Just a few clicks, and VM is working. Uh, now, a few, a few uh, sentences about OpenShift pipelines. Uh, OpenShift pipelines is a cloud-native uh, CI/CD solution based on Tecton. Uh, it uses Tecton uh, blocks to automate deployments uh, across multiple platforms. And uh, with Tecton, or Tecton introduced multiple CR, CRDs for defining CI/CD pipelines. Uh, before I will go uh, more deeper into our project, I would like to explain some, uh, some definitions. Uh, I, will, I will repeat these uh, words a lot, so let's, let's uh, try to explain them. So first of all, task. Uh, it defines a building step. For example, you can imagine uh, building some binary or building a container or running a test. So it's just the small, smallest piece of pipeline. Then we have a pipeline. Uh, pipeline consists of multiple tasks. So with pipeline, you can uh, define, for example, prepare a disk for VM, start the VM, run some scripts inside the VM, then shut down the VM, delete the VM. So that's a pipeline. Then we have a pipeline resources uh, and uh, it defines an object that is an input for the pipeline, for example, a container or a Git repository. And it defines outputs, for example, again, some container or some change in a Git or something. And then we have a pipeline run. A pipeline run starts the pipeline. 
So when you have some definition of pipeline, you will create a pipeline, ob pipeline run object, which will then start the pipeline and uh, Tecton will take care of it. And now about the project. Uh, Qver Tecton task provides a specific uh, OpenShift virtualization task, uh, which focus on creating virtual machine, deleting them, uh, starting VMs, creating data volumes, data sources. Uh, of course, you can do some manipulation with the PVC. Uh, you can run, for example, uh, disk virt, uh, disk virt sys prep, uh, yeah, disk virt customize, disk virt sys prep, and many other actions. Uh, you can find the uh, project under the link in the slides. And here is the list of all tasks which we are currently have and we are shipping with uh, OpenShift uh, virtualization. Uh, you can find tasks for creating virtual machines. Uh, we allow to create VM from manifest. So you just pass there a YAML, ma YAML manifest or you can create a virtual machine from template. Uh, then we have tasks for uh, manipulating with metadata of templates. So for example, you can copy the template, uh, do some modifications, for example, like uh, change the number of CPU, number of memory, or add some devices inside the VM. Then we have tasks for creating or deleting uh, data volumes slash data sources. Uh, there is a small note that uh, in OpenShift Virtualization 4.11, the task has name create data volume from manifest, uh, but then we add uh, much more functionality in 4.12, so its name changed to modify data object. And as you can see in 4.11, it just know how to create data volume, but in 4.12, uh, it knows how to create, delete data volumes or data sources. Then we have a task for generating SSH keys. So when you run this task, it will generate a new pair of SSH keys and store them into the, into the cluster. Then we have a task for executing commands in virtual machines. Uh, first, first task executes uh, commands via SSH. The second one just uh, stop and deletes the VM. And then we have a task with uh, libgsfs tool. Uh, we have two, discrete customize and discrete sysprep. And then we have a task for waiting uh, for the VM. Uh, like the VM can be in some states. So you just define uh, for which state you are waiting and the task will wait for that state. And uh, now about the project Tecton Task Operator. Uh, TTO or Tecton Task Operator is an operator which takes care about deploying of Qver Tecton Task. So this operator is something like a box which consists uh, all of the previous task. And when you install uh, OpenShift virtualization, uh, TTO will take care about deploying these tasks inside the cluster. Uh, TTO is a part of OpenShift virtualization 4.11. Uh, it's uh, marked as a dev preview, so it doesn't have any official documentation uh, or test coverage. Of course, we have documentation and test coverage in upstream, but not in downstream. Uh, from OpenShift virtualization 4.11, uh, TTO is deployed by default, but by default, it does not deploy anything. It's just a testing feature, and when user would like to use this feature, uh, he or she has to uh, go to HCO CR. HCO is like an operator which uh, takes care about deploying any other OpenShift virtualization uh, components. And then uh, user has to change or enable a special feature gate, which will then tell to TTO to deploy its resources. Uh, you can see an example in the presentation and then there is a link to the GitHub repo. So uh, before I will show you some examples, what you can do with these tasks, 
I would like to speak a little bit about motivation. Why we are doing this, why we are creating these tasks, why we are creating these examples. Imagine when you would like to use uh, OpenShift virtualization, uh, you need to have some source data, some, uh, some disk with the operating system. When you are trying to run a VM with Linux, it's quite easy to find a cloud image. With just a few clicks, you can find an image for Fedora, Ubuntu, CentOS, RHEL. But what about Microsoft Windows? I guarantee you, you will not find any uh, publicly available cloud image. And for that, we prepared uh, example pipelines, which will take the URL to a Microsoft Windows 10 ISO, and then it will trigger the whole, pi whole pipeline, which will take this ISO, install, install the operating system, then stores it, stores it in a special uh, data volume. And uh, then there is a second pipeline, which I will explain later. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have two example pipelines. The first one is Windows 10 installer. The second one is Windows 10 customize. Uh, the, first the first pipeline will take the ISO image and uh, installs it and then store it in the cluster. And uh, then you can use it as a golden image in OpenShift virtualization OS image, images namespace. Then there is a second pipeline, uh, Windows 10 customize. Uh, this pipeline takes the resulting uh, result and then, then it does some modifications. E.g., in our case, uh, it installs uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server, and then, again, uh, Pipeline will take the image, stores it in data volume, and uh, you have fully working Microsoft Windows 10 with SQL Server, ready for use in, our, in other VMs. Um, so, as I mentioned, the first Pipeline, uh, it, uh, it just needs ISO, uh, the URL, specifically, and it will install the, this operating system. And if it, of course, uh, installs Virtio drivers for better performance. And then it stores the image inside the, uh, well, in this case, it's Qvert OS images. It's upstream name, but in downstream, it's open. Uh, op uh, OpenShift CNV virtualization or something like that. In the bottom, you can see an image from which task it consists. Uh, then there are special parameters. The only one which is required is a link to an, uh, to an ISO. E.g., you can, you can uh, select from official Microsoft sites or you can do your own server which can then serve the ISO to the pipelines. Then, of course, you can uh, specify some other parameters like an auto attend config map name, uh, where it's, it's a special config map where you prepare sysprep, and uh, according to this sysprep, the pipeline will then install this uh, Windows. Then, source template name, base DV name. Uh, here is the list of all tasks uh, which, uh, from which this pipeline consists of. So at first we have to copy template. Uh, we are copying uh, the template from, from project called Common Templates. Uh, especially we are copying uh, Windows 10 uh, desktop large. Uh, then there is modifying VM template, which takes this template, do some modifications, e.g. change the boot source. Uh, then uh, we are creating VM from the template, wait for it, create, create uh, the new DV from the installed DV, and then we do some cleanup. And here is the demo. First note, this de demo is cut. The whole pipeline takes about one hour, but it was cut to only three minutes. As you can see, there are two pipelines. 
Windows 10 installer, Windows 10 customize. You just start it, provide a URL for ISO, or you can change the pre-default well, parameters. So start it. It will do some copying of templates, modifying, then it will start the VM. And now let's see how the VM is going. As you can see, the VM was created. Currently, it's starting. During the pipeline, the VM is multiple times restarted. It's, it's fine when it's restarted. So now it's booting. In a few seconds, you should see the installation page. As I mentioned, uh, this installation is uh, going through sysprep. So everything what you define in sysprep, uh, the installation will just follow the manifest. Now, as you can see, it's, it's booted. And now it will do some, some uh, generalizing, some cleaning. It's shutting down. Now let's, uh, let's go back to pipelines. As you can see, uh, it's doing the last steps, like copying the disk. And when you click on virtual machines, you can select the Windows 10 template, and it will immediately show you that there is a boot source available. So you just click single button, and voila, you have working Windows VM. And now, in this, ca in this case, uh, the automation stopped. Because uh, to do some extra steps, we create a special, another pipeline called Windows 10 Customize. Uh, the purpose of this pipeline is to take the result of the first pipeline and then do some modifications. In this case, we are installing SQL Server but of course, you can install any other uh, software or any other packages. Uh, in the bottom, you can see uh, the picture from uh, which this pipeline consists of. Again, uh, we have some special parameters, but in this case, you don't have to provide anything because the pipeline will take results from the first pipeline. So, you can, for example, define template name, uh, config, uh, config map name, where you again define the sysprep and e.g. what you can install in, inside the Windows VM. And then the result name uh, with which you can then run another VM. Again, it consists of uh, multiple tasks. First of all, we have to copy template, modify template, uh, then we have to create the v, uh, VM, uh, wait for the VM, uh, then again do some modifications, and then copy the resulting disk to a completely new disk. And again, we have an example. So as you can see, the first pipeline was successful. Now let's trigger a, a second one. As I mentioned, you don't have to specify anything in this pipeline, just tr hit start. Again, it starts the VM, so let's look inside.
Again, I have to mention that uh, this pipeline takes about one hour. And now it's installing the SQL server. Now, now it's doing some, some preparation, cleanup, it's shutting down, and in the pipeline, the pipeline will take the resulting disk, copy it into completely new disk, and it will create a new template for you, so you can uh, use this new template with the new disk and create a new VM from it. As you can see, there is a new template. Yeah, and just with single hit, you can launch a new VM with a pre-installed SQL server. Okay, and that's all from this presentation. In case you have any question, uh, don't hesitate to ping me on the email or you can ask here. Where to speak here? Uh, <laughs> cool. Do you right understand that you're using uh, PowerShell to install all the software inside virtual machine? Yes. Yes, we and are using uh, PowerShell script, which uh, in first pipeline it installs my virtio drivers, and then it installs my uh, SQL server. And how the commands are invoked from the pipeline through the SSH, I guess? Uh, it's a part of a sysprep. So you define sysprep, then there is a special command to run uh, or to mount the, the script, and uh, the script is just below the sysprep. So it's, it's quite easy to... Yeah, and the second uh, step also done this way. Uh, which step you mean? Uh, you described you have two steps, first for installing Windows uh -huh. and uh, preparation, the second one is for installing SQL Server. Yeah, both, both are done the same way, so with a PowerShell script below the sysprep, and yeah, then okay. invoked from sysprep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, where this is all done, like uh, on the backend side, is it built locally on the machine or? Uh, in the cluster. In the cluster. And uh, can you like connect multiple clusters this way? Like can I, for example, run the tasks and build, let's say, Fedora, S390 machine in IBM Cloud? Uh, can, can you please repeat the question again? I mean, you built a x86 machine for uh -huh. uh, Windows-based. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to, for example, use, let's say, my own IBM Cloud credentials and build the machine in the cloud? Uh, I think so. If, if you have pre-installed OpenShift virtualization, then I don't see any problem with that. It needs to be on the remote node uh, in the, in the yeah, cloud. In, in your remote cluster, you have to have OpenShift virtualization, OpenShift pipelines, or Tecton. And then it will work for you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if uh, I can find source code of all these steps somewhere. Uh, yes, yes, uh, you can find them. So, uh, yeah, yeah, the source code of a task, it's on this link. So when you just write qvert slash qvert, it will find you the organization qvert, and then you just find the qvert tecton task. But uh, the source code is of pipeline. Okay, it's... Uh, in Tecton task operator. Again, it's under the Qvert organization, so just find repos with uh, Tecton prefix and you will find all source code. And of course, you can ping me on email and I will send you the links. Thanks a lot. Yep. Hey, hello. Uh, so your solution is built on top of Tecton, right? So in case your pipeline fails, how do you mm -hmm. debug it? And in case uh, 
is there anything missing that you like because Tekton kind of builds on jobs I think uh, you, or no no it doesn't when when you run Tekton uh, pipeline or when you create a pipeline run it will create like a job uh, pods so each task is running inside a separate job pod okay and and in case your pipeline fails so you just directly check the logs of those pods or yes Yes. Just that. Okay. And is there anything else missing in those logs, which might, like, in case, like, is there anything um, missing that you would like to have, like, uh, additionally on top of those pods that, that would help you to better debug it? I think not, because uh, when you debug uh, the pipeline run, it will tell you which task uh, fails, which pod fails. And then you just go inside that pod, uh, run OC log, and you will see like the whole log, what, what failed. But of course, uh, <coughs> uh, when you would like to run a deep diagnostic, for example, when the logs are not enough, you have to build your own tasks, your own images, and then run the pipeline again. But uh, I think for user, user usage, it's enough to debug from pods from logs, from pods. Okay, thanks a lot. So then, thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.